Hello everyone and welcome back along to the Super Rugby Preview. Round 14 is coming up this weekend and finally, we can say finally, we have the man you've been all wanting to see. We've got plenty to talk about this week, so we'll introduce him first and foremost, the Scottish Cannon. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much. It's been quite a few weeks. I've been uh, creating excuses to stay off the preview because of the Waratahs performances, but uh, I'm here to uh, be accountable for my team's actions. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. At least you can back your team up for a win this time and it won't be all doom and gloom for you. Bloody but finally hell. he's back, so we're going to have plenty to talk about the Waratahs in this week's episode. But of course, like always, we'll be having a look back at round 13 very quickly because there is a full round of matches in round 14. Nine. As well, of course, your Super Bowl picks. Yep, nine full 20 matches. 20 hours. 20, is it really? Pretty much, That yeah. is a long time. I like it. I like 20 hours of weekend doing nothing but watching rugby. Sounds great to me. So we're going to get stuck into it as always with round 13. Of course, before we get stuck into it, we always like to review where we sit with my favorite colored pieces of cardboard. Are they actually made out of, what are they made out of? Do plastic. You know? The cards? Right? They're plastic. Oh, I should have known. They can't get wet. 106 yellow cards and 10 red cards. We've smashed the double figures of red cards. It's a monumental amount, way more than last year. Are they warranted this year, Ken? And what do you think? Always, as the referee, the local referee on the show as well, what do you reckon? Are yeah, they warranted? Absolutely, absolutely. There's clear protocol coming in from Sansa. Well, uh, let's not mention. Let's make it. Like, let's make a, uh, a a a deal not to mention Sansa in this 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 discussion. Can we agree to that? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Because the Kings lost. So yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's do that. Okay, so coming from World Rugby and down, obviously there's tough protocol on the tackles, <laughs> and um, the, the rest is sort of history. Necros are trying to abandon that from the game. That's the, one of the worst things I think is in the game of rugby is Necros. I don't pick it up enough when I'm refereeing. I really should, and I'm really going to start focusing more on that because it, it's very important. But, um, you know, any contact with the head, um, especially with the, you know, the scare of even Reese Hodge in the Rebels uh, Waratahs game or something like that. It's important that the player's safety is at the foremost front of rugby and rugby union. So yeah, monumental amount. Like we talked about. Um, do you think our yellow cards are going to reach 150 this year? Of course. I mean, of what, course. They're, averaging, they're averaging what seven or eight around, probably eight around. Yeah. Uh, eight yeah. times we've got five rounds <laughs> left. Or well, four rounds left. Thirty-two. Oh, we may hit it. It's hard. It's hard. Depends. I think, if... I think all, the, all referees should target one hundred and fifty yellow cards for, for the Super Rugby season. Oh God, no! I hope not. <laughs> that would be amazing if yeah. that happens. It's. It's. I'm going to do I mean, something 40, special. I mean, forty-four in. Four, was it, what did you say? One hundred and six. It's currently at. Yeah, one hundred and six. So and forty-four in four rounds. You need eleven yellow cards. Who the at the hell start knows of the season, we were going to over average. ten around, so it's possible. Yeah, maybe it's, they've relaxed a bit more recently, or maybe yeah, the they got slack. The behavior. I don't know. Nah. Apart the from Angus Gardner in the Waratahs game, but it's, uh, we'll mention that when we get there. Yeah, we sure will. But round 13, we'll go through these quickly. Um, the results from this round that kicked off uh, with the Chiefs up against the Crusaders. Another match of the weekend. It was always Crusaders two in a row of taking on their, their biggest rivals. Um, they were too good, though. On the day, the Crusaders still undefeated. And they won that one 31-24 over the Chiefs. Uh, it wasn't Fiji as well, which is a great place to play rugby. An amazing crowd. Um, always 100% in behind anything they get. Doesn't matter who's playing there. Um, Chiefs home game, but you'd hardly know it apart Crusaders. from the man on the oh, announcer radio. It was a Chiefs home game. Sorry, I thought it was a Chiefs home game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the man on the announcer was going doing the Chiefs chant, but no one really yeah. gave a shit because they just no. wanted to watch rugby. Yeah. Um, but do you, the Crusaders deserve to still be undefeated, you reckon? Uh, yeah, they've been playing out of their minds, the Crusaders, haven't they? Um, they're very Honestly, they also don't have a huge amount of huge names half the time. I mean, yeah. um, you know, you've got Bridge, you've got some other players in the Crusaders. They're really starting to make a, a solid impact. I think the biggest thing that the Crusaders are doing better than any other team this year is the tactics that... Uh, is it Robinson? Neil Robinson, the coach? or something? Razor Robinson. Razor Robinson, that's it. Um <laughs> He, uh, he, he's one of the coach of the year at the moment with Super Rugby. Mm. I think tactically they are just superior to any other team at the moment. 
Yeah, or you might know him as Scott Robinson as well. That's, That's his normal normal name. Yeah, yeah. Neil. So yeah, you're right. That, that, he was, I reckon, holy and solely the reason that they took out the Hurricanes like they did the week before. Just immense tactics. The Chiefs, I think, was just more down to just a better team on the day. The Chiefs, I reckon they left a lot of points out there too, the Chiefs, especially goal-kicking, crude and amazing with ball in hand and kicking for territory. But when it comes off the tee, he was pretty poor, mm. which did seem a few concerns around... Uh, future all-black goal-kicking uh, Don't you know, think plans, Glenn Barrett will do sure. it anyway? Well, it depends who starts, really. Yeah. Surely a Barrett would start. Barrett's but... overcrude in any day. Yeah, well, yeah, to a normal person, but uh-huh. who, who's going to be, who's going to be, uh, you know, playing the McKenzie's? Jordy no. Barrett's anywhere? Jordy Barrett would have on the bench, but... Yeah. No, I'd agree with you there. I'd have Barrett kicking just because he'd be the only one in the team. Um, obviously, Ben Smith will be your starting fullback, and there's no room for the others no. on there. Anyway, Savi, I don't know who your other matches. wing will be. You have Sav- Savi and Naholo? Uh, at this point, yeah. There's yeah. going to be no Milner Scudder, but, no. but uh, there's, there's, there's a few lurking around that could do the job there. But, you know, not all blacks yet. No. A couple of weeks away from that. Yeah, we could get you on for a discussion about that too. But we're moving on from that because we're off to South Africa. The Storm was up against the Blues. Referees under a huge amount of fire from this match. The Storm was, some saying, gifted this victory over the Blues. 30 points to 22. The Blues being in decent form, but they'll stop short by the, formers, uh, the Stormers, who I don't think are that bad of a team. <laughs> they played well at the start of the year. Great team on paper. Did the Stormers win this or did the referee hand it to them? Uh, I didn't see the full game. Um, I've got to be honest. I Once I saw the Stormers actually play within a more favorable time zone for me, I wasn't impressed by the Stormers at all. Mm. Um, I mean, they... The quality of opposition that they... I mean, they were, what, 6-0 or 7-0 to start the season? Um, yeah. The quality of opposition they were beating was not... It was not amazing. I mean, and um, I mean, they barely got over the line against the worst New Zealand side in the in, in the competition. While all the New Zealand sides are really good at the moment, um, you know, we'll talk about Australian rugby in a second, but the Storm is really scraping by barely at, in Cape Town at home. Not sure if, um, I mean, they've got good individual players, but are they really that much of a threat? Well, they're going to be in the playoffs, yep. regardless of whatever way you look at it. They double the points of the Bulls, so yeah. they're going to be there. Um, I, I think if they're at home, they're definitely a threat, Absolutely. like most South African teams. I think the Lions are a threat regardless. Yeah. But I think the Stormers at home are going to be a threat from South Africa for sure. Especially uh, if on the road. in the finals. Yeah, no chance on the road, though. Even in Australia, it would be hard to pick them to pick up a win on the road. Maybe it'll be a 50-50 one for sure there. Mm. But they got the win over the Blues, which, you know, that really killed off the Blues' hopes of getting into the playoffs as well because they needed that win, especially with the Highlanders who come a couple of games later. Mm. But we moved back to New Zealand. The uh, Hurricanes are up against the Cheetahs. And you've already talked about poor performing uh, touring sides from South Africa. Yeah. 61-7. Uh, poor old Cheetahs again. They look all right at home. They can upset a few teams at home, but they were really dealt to uh, by the Hurricanes. And... Is, how much of that do you think was a repercussions from the week before with our doubt to by the Crusaders? Well, I mean, they beat, what, face three or four New Zealand sides in a row at the moment, the, the, the Cheetahs? I mean, yeah, they've just much. got no confidence at the moment. Just losing. Mm. They lost it last minute against the, was it the Highlanders? The Highlanders, the yeah. yeah. They yep. were in 14 points in two minutes. So it's just the confidence thing with the Cheetahs. Um, they've got great individual players. I really like the way they play. But again, they're very similar to the Kings. They can score tries, but they can't defend. And while yeah, they only scored true. seven points this game, they, from the amount of the match I did see, they were really solid in attack. It's just they just couldn't defend. And most of the tries were in the second half when I wasn't able to watch the match. But, um, you know, just too good. Just really too good, the, uh, the hi- Hurricanes at the moment. Yep, so, so the Cheetahs were put to the sword. Speaking of putting to the sword, mm-hmm. Brits team... From last week, uh-huh. he was confident they could do something here. He actually picked them to win. I did as would well. Would you believe? Did you? To beat yeah. the Highlanders? Yes. Oh, Purely that's, because, that's... I mean, the force, the force, the beat the, the, the Jaguars away from home. Like that's a huge win. Argentina is a stomping ground that really any team, especially such a, uh, the quality of a team of the force, would have no mm. chance at. How yeah, do they no, come you, and lose? Right. I mean, I know they've got injuries, but for, they lose by 49 points a week later at home. Yeah. And and at home against a team that's coming back from Africa as well, mm. which I thought would have really given them a chance because 
that tired side, you know, normally when the South African teams go back to South Africa, the last place they go is to the force on the way home and vice versa when New Zealand come back. So I thought they had a chance. I was quite surprised the score was so big. Like 55 to 6. Yeah. That was a thrashing. Is that, does that, is that killed off the force for you this year? Do you think there's uh, anything uh, more they can do? Uh, I honestly, I think the for really from the the standpoint of Australian rugby at the moment, the force um, this win did nothing for their survival in the competition um, for next year. Uh, honestly, I, I I think they're going to be very difficult to a get into the top of the Australian conference, which is a two. It's a really a two play uh, two team race at the moment. The red people say the Reds have got a chance. The Reds have no chance. Um, and the, the 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 I expect the Brumbies to get there, but obviously they've got uh, they've got Argentina, they've got the little Jaguars this week. They've got to do well to win over there, or um, if the Waratahs can win in New Zealand, which I don't see, they will make the finals. But I think the Force are gone. Yeah, the, that was a big one. Fifty-five-six was the score there. Highlanders thrashing the Force. Uh, but what I thought was probably one of the most interesting matches of the round was the Sunwolves hosting the Sharks. Now the scoreline. I think doesn't really fully represent this match whatsoever. It was 38-17. Sunwolves, you could say, pretty thrashed by that. But with 10 minutes to go, this game was really, really close. And I think it was about three uh, late tries to the Sharks that really smashed us to put it to, get, uh, to bed. But I got a lot of comments earlier uh, last week about this was probably the best Sunwolves team that they've ever put out. And that's they've got a really good chance of beating the Sharks in four 70 minutes. Uh, those were almost proved true. Mm. The, the Sunwolves, though, they need to play the full A. These Sharks are too good at the end. Mm. Um, there's still more to come from the Sunwolves for you, though? The problem with the Sunwolves is the travel, mate. Um, mm. You know, I, they don't like playing in Singapore. They love Japan, but yeah. uh, they yeah. can't win in Singapore. I think they beat the Kings there last year. Um, but their other wins have been in Japan. So, mm. um, you know, I cannot wait for the, the format to change so they actually get more games in Tokyo. I, I think... Um, they'll be more competitive there, especially with the Australian opposition. I think the Sunwolves are on the up and up, and I hope that they do well next year. The Sharks, obviously, um, really, I, at the start of the year, I didn't think they were going to do much, but really, um, they are really coming along well, and they, I think they'll be the wild card for Africa, will they, the Sharks? Are they uh, at this stage, yeah? Yeah. So, um, they're going to be tough, but, uh, tough to beat, but if they have to travel to New Zealand, which more than likely they do, um, I don't think they'll have much of a chance in the finals either. Yeah, they, they've got a good talent pool though, a lot of injuries, but they mm. seem to keep producing these players that can perform at, at sort of rugby level, which is, yeah, it's a credit to how alive South African rugby still is, despite mm. how poorly they're performing internationally. But uh, that, I thought that was a really good effort by the Sun. It was, uh, it was a good match to watch, and as painful was it was, staying up till about 2 o'clock in the morning to watch it, yep. um, it's alright, we'll work the next day. But next matchup, we had the Lions up against the Bulls. Uh, a few matches blew out here big time. Yeah. This was another one of them. 51-14. Expected. I think the Lions yeah. would be far too good for the Bulls. And you know, a huge hiding like that. The Lions are still on track to be one of the favourites for the tournament for you two? I think they are. Honestly, I, 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 they're tournament favourites outside of the, the Crusaders at the moment. Um, but, I mean, it's difficult for them if they're going to have to... I expect at, the, at this stage, I expect them to make the finals um, and the, the actual the actual finals. I see the Lions again, like last year, coming to play in New Zealand. But again, if they play away from home, they're not going to win the Super Rugby Championship. Um, for me as well, uh, the Bulls, after their loss to the Sun Wolves, and then came back and <laughs> scored a surprise. I, I can't remember who they beat the week later, the, the, the Bulls. But, um, you know, the Bulls are just... Are unlucky and uh, are just not consistent enough for most people's liking. Yeah, they've got a lot of work to do, and and the, the sharks are, are bolting away with that that wild card spot as well. So the bulls don't really have much to even play for at this stage, and and that just really put the curtain down on them as any finest chance getting thrashed by a front running team like that. But the next match was an interesting one. The Kings. My new favourite team from South Africa. Up against the Brumbies. I thought the Kings could do this one. This one kind of surprised me with the result. But the Brumbies with their forward play, I think, was their ability to control the match. Put the Kings out of their comfort zone a bit. And a, a low-scoring game, which is weird for the Kings as well. It really is. And the Brumbies just... I think it was just that, that style of play that the Brumbies just got the control mm. and took it away from the Kings. 
I, 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 the Brumbies, for me, they're not scoring tries. Uh, I mean, mm. I think if you had a look at the stats of the last five games, they played outside of the Kings game. They scored something like three or four tries in five matches, something like that, mm. something very similar. Uh, Brumbies, you know, they've got no attacking threats. And, um, you know, they had to use the rolling mall. Um, uh, rolling mall is a good a good part of their game, but it's not going to win a championship. It's like, you know, Argentina's got a good scrum. Um, Scotland's got good consistency. Ireland's got those uh, big name players, but you've got to have an all-round uh, out-and-out, sh- you know, strength as well as not letting other areas of their game down. So the, the Brumbies, um, unlike the Kings, are, you know, probably going to make the finals, but um, I just don't see them doing anything. But in Canberra, it's difficult. It, it really is difficult. I'm surprised the Brumbies won this game, to be honest. I think um, my main point... I was going to make, I've always forgotten what it was, but it is, they actually didn't let the Kings concede, uh, score a try at all. The mm. one try they did score was even a penalty try, and they were leading 10-5 the is the Kings. Try. Well, it is a try, but it's not physically actually scoring a try. <laughs> so it's still, technically, they didn't fully concede someone going over their line to score mm. a try. Although, they probably did something uh, in the way that stopped it actually happening. Yeah. But still, for the Brumbies though, I think the main goal is just to top the Australian Conference, and that style of play is, is going to do it for them, the way they're going yeah. um, at the moment. So that's all that's probably going to matter to them, um, given the way Australia is at the moment. Yes. But last match, and this one, I'll let you go fully away with. Waratahs yeah. 50, Rebels 23. Um, Waratahs dis- discipline was her- hor- horrible. Eight penalties in the first 15 minutes or something. Dean Mum giving three or something away. Toalatu going to the bin in the first few minutes. I don't know what the Waratahs are doing. Honestly, I, I, I'll, ra- I'll rant when we get to the Waratahs game, when they get to the Highlanders, but they had to win this game. Um, you know, they could have put 70 or 80 points on the Rebels if they really wanted to, if they really wanted to show up. Um, but the Rebels, 18, 19, 20 injuries at the moment are uh, in a lot of strife in their current situation. Uh, asking them to win at Allianz Stadium against a Waratahs side that is being decent, but has not put an 80-minute performance together. Um, I think everyone pretty much expected the Waratahs to beat the Rebels here. I didn't. I picked the Rebels to win. Wow. <laughs> but it was still fairly close for a while, though. I think the, the, uh, the Waratahs only really took that away quite late on. Mm. Um, but like you say, they're both really error-ridden uh, teams. Yeah, yeah. And Jeez. That's Bad Australian game. rugby at the moment, isn't yeah. it, really? Yep, yep, uh, yep. But yeah, that was round 13. Nice and simple, easy, quick way through it. Now we're going to check out how the Super Brew picks look, and we're going to pick on Mr. Cannon, because I'm we'll see in a moment, you. you're below me! Yes, so indeed. So, we can have a look, and it is amazingly, amazing, this guy is a freak, Caleb42N, stop picking so many right, would you? <laughs> Still leading the way, I don't think he's been dislodged in that top spot no. for weeks now, and, but, you got to be fair though, Devin is really reeling him in, he's got the fishing rod out, and he's pulling him back, Quite quickly, the difference is only just over a point so one to uh, Devon in second. Yeah, one game, one bad call from Caleb, and it could be all curtains on his number one spot. Uh, a lot of changes still around third as well. Nates has piled up five spots, and he takes now third. And it was a man called Dance who is climbing up with the yellow cap into seventh spot Dude, as we well. Came from him. Yeah, it was a good weekend. Yeah, yellow cap winner is always a good weekend. Um, if you can pick some of those horrible matches that you have in these rounds that we're going at the moment, but other ones drive them all down two, which I yeah. should have on, should have him on next week and uh, give him shit about that. Uh-huh. Uh, what else are we going on? Down in the depths is where you'll find the rest of us. My yeah. my picks are down in twenty sixth, but Scottish Cannon up one though. Uh, up one, I, I, I still had a very bad week. Uh, I mean, I was just going to mention that if you have a look at the weekend, there was such... I don't know why why there were so many hidings this weekend. You know, there's been mm. so many good weekends of really close games. Why do you think this yeah. weekend was particularly different, just out of interest? Oh, it's hard to say. It's, it's Matches are really hard to pick because they say Super Rugby's broken. But they do indeed. When, when you look at it... You still don't know, even when it looks like a mismatch, like the Kings uh, versus anyone, you, you'd normally, two years ago or a year ago, you'd say the Kings are going to get smashed by 40 points. Now it's not that case, and you just don't know what team's going to turn up, and you could easily look at those games, and like look at the last time the Waratahs 
and the Rebels met. There was only that last minute try that even saved the Waratahs uh, to win that match. So it's it's hard to pick. It, it just I can't explain it. Do you, do, you think it, it do you think it makes the, uh, the competition less exciting if there's 50 points put on each team? No, it doesn't make it more exciting. I'm but saying, that, that do you, you think it loses it. its excitement is what I'm saying, is what I meant. It's hard to, hard to say that. It doesn't lose it. It doesn't lose it because you don't know what's going to happen. Mm. If, if everyone picked that margin of 50 points between those three matches, then yeah. That would be a bit predictable and a bit boring. But it's pretty safe to say you could look at those margins and most people were down in the teens picking those matches for winners either way. And and even some of those games, it was the uh, the other team people were saying were going to win. Still had a, a little chunk of players or people who were going to pick that. So I don't think it's fully predictable. Not yet. It's too early for that. Too early for that. But why, why are your picks why are your picks so low? Why are you down at 28? Oh, I... I after the Waratahs, I've said this, and you're going to say this as an excuse, but <laughs> after the Waratahs lost to the Kings, I have become disenfranchised with Super Rugby. And I don't want to say that. I really don't. But when the Waratahs, the way that you... It's like any team, you know, Cornflake, you, I, I know you enjoy it. I mean, you watch it from a spectator point of view. Um, but more for me is I love my team. I love my Waratahs. Uh, I love them to the... At edge and back and when they won the Super Rugby final in 2014 something I'll never forget but when they come and lose to the worst team in the competition at home that's where I have a problem mm. especially with the structural issues mm. in Australia at the moment it just really takes the Australian fan and me out of it it's not anything to do with Super Rugby uh, or the games that are being played it is the overall just aura and the structure in, in Australia at the moment and this is where I just haven't been paying too much more attention than I would like. And that's where my picks have fallen down. Worst team in Super Rugby? Well, they were the worst nah. team in Super Rugby in round seven or eight when the Waratahs lost that match. That, that turned around their season, really? Yeah, absolutely. Now and the then they go on to beat the Rebels. They go on to beat... Um, I can't, they could smash the Rebels, the, and then they beat another team after. I think it was another straight. Was it the four? They were no, three it was in a four. row. It was three in a row, yeah. I can't remember the yeah. other one. Um, it must have been, uh, I don't know. I don't know. The yeah, Waratahs, and then the uh, Rebels, and then there was one more in there. I can't remember who the Kings also beat. But, I mean, it, was it the Bulls? It was an upset. Wasn't it the Bulls or the Sharks? Yeah, they beat the Bulls first. Yeah. And then they no, they beat the Waratahs in Sydney because they got smacked in the, the the by the Reds in the force in the two weeks before that. <laughs> then they went home to to Port Elizabeth, beat the Bulls, and then they beat the Rebels forty four three. So that's, that's where, where they thrashed the Rebels at home. Yes. Yeah. So that's the point I'm trying to make. It's not anything to do with the style of the Super Rugby at the moment. It's just currently the aura and my perception of Super Rugby as a whole, and this has affected my picks at the moment. And the Kings are a gloriously good team. Yes. Other leaders in the leaderboard, we got Bray Hartley's down at 31st, but he's still gone up too. Uh, who's got the wooden spoon this week, interestingly enough? Oh, it's a man with a name by numbers. And I'm not even going to guess 8514171 oh. who you are. I don't know why people username. have names like that. You have to <laughs> remember your either. name. What is that? Yeah, it's a bit bizarre, isn't it? Yeah. It is a bit bizarre. And oh, what's happened to old Hypersport? He's way down the bottom. I don't know what he's doing down there. I think His he picks just aren't going recently too well. added. Oh, yeah, he did pretty much just join him. But I'm still going to call he, him out. He's, he's a loser. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I love you, Hypersport. But uh, yeah, you, you should be higher. You should have joined us earlier, mate. Yeah, you should have joined a lot earlier. But Caleb's still leading the way. And while we're here, we're going to have a look at... The fantasy team picks as well. I know how much you hate these. I have but, not. I have not touched my team since but, round four. I think. I'm still going to call your team out as rubbish because they're below mine as well. Uh, we still got MFCFOs Blues at the top. Uh, the uh, top three have not changed this week. Dicks out, still second, and Jesus. the Storming Rangers. You yeah, Dicks out, great team name, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I know. The bus driver. You could have called it maybe Richards out or something <laughs> a bit more. Uh... No, no, he spelt it D I K K. So give the man a bit of credit. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, he's not, he's not that he's not that straightforward. Oh. But he's sitting in second anyway. And of course, the awesome transgender sloths, great name as well, is sitting fourth. Uh, it was the Ace and Honey Badgers. Who comes up with these names? Who I got the yellow no cap? And they're sitting in 11th. 
further down. I have to find my team. My team's down a couple of spots in 25th, unfortunately. And now I'm going, your team went up two. It went up two. I have no up idea. Up two spots. No and idea. And you're in 32nd. Uh, who's down the How bottom are you? Are you updating your team every week? Uh, most weeks. Most <laughs> weeks. I try to, if I remember. But if I, you I lose remember to my, to my fantasy in. team when I haven't touched it ever since <laughs> round four, uh, you on. have to do a chili challenge like I had to do. I'm like a hundred over a hundred points ahead of you. No <laughs> chance. No chance at all. With your injury ravaged team. But that's a fantasy team. Anyway, and that is the Super Brew picks. So now we're gonna go on to the main event. It is the picks for round fourteen of Super Rugby, which all starts off in it is Auckland land, where the blues Auckland are back at home land. again, and they are up against the Chiefs. Now the Chiefs who obviously had that big loss last week so i'll be hurting a bit for that but the blues are back at home and i think really the blues need everyone else to lose in the new zealand conference for the not rest of the competition happen. if they're going to have any chance which is pretty much like say not going to happen hmm. um the chiefs the chiefs are in a real battle though on the other hand of things uh they are sitting right in the in the middle of a big chunk with the hurricanes and the highlanders on 43 and 41 points those three sides so hmm. these points are crucial for the Chiefs. If they're going to keep track, they have to beat the Blues. It's an away game. Can you see the Blues, you know, now that they're effectively out of it, are they going to be the banana skin for anyone? Uh, well, let, let me, just before I get into that, I'm just going to say this round looks amazingly matched, evenly matched. Um, I think it'll be an exciting round. You've got Reds Force, you've got Sun Wilson Cheaters, also two very consistent teams. Highlanders and Waratahs. Uh, the Waratahs, if they play their best, can definitely take it up to the Landers. Uh, Bulls, <laughs> Hurricanes, Shark Storms, that should be a, a very good news. I'm just generally talking here. But uh, anyway, uh, got diverting <laughs> from the topic, Blues versus Chiefs should be a good game. Um, hard with the Blues coming back from South Africa. But we always seem to say that. And sometimes it affects the team and sometimes it doesn't, doesn't it? Yeah, that's true. The cat is attacking my screen again. That's all right. Yeah, the Blues, the Blues are a good enough team, though, and they're coming back home. And the Chiefs, I think the Chiefs are going to have too much on them, though. They just, they have to win. They have to win, and they they'll be they'll be hurting for that loss to Crusaders because they were the team that upset the Hurricanes. They were the team, yeah. You know, they've kind of trailblazed the comeback back the other way for the other side. So if anything, you know, the Chiefs will be determined because they'll have to make that top eight picks, but they won't want to be playing. Uh, you know, too good of a side if they can help it. But I've got the Chiefs to win it by only nine points. Mm, only nine. What have you got? Probably go a bit more than that, actually. Probably 13 Ooh. or 14 points. I'm not going to put my picks because at the moment I'll do it when uh, uh, we're close to the time. But um, I do think the Chiefs will win this game. Um, I mean, they didn't play badly. They, they had the game in their grasp against the Crusaders. There's just some wayward kicking and some bad decisions that ultimately mm. ended up making them lose the match. Um, Blues, again, um, really good. Sonny Bill Williams coming into his own. I'm sure you like that from a, a Kiwi perspective, but <laughs> Chiefs will be too strong here, I think. Chiefs to win for both of us. And interestingly enough, the Hurricanes and the Chiefs have the, both the same record as well. Mm. So they're both on nine wins and, and two losses. So bonus points going to be huge. Yeah. Um, and the Chiefs, they, they need to pick it up here against the Blues. They need to thrash them and put them to bed big time if they're going to have... Yeah, you know, the chance to pick up that second spot. Do you think but, though? Do you think though yeah. that um, obviously a couple of the New Zealand, a couple of the New Zealand teams will be travelling over to uh, New uh, to South Africa in the finals here because there's only one home final for New Zealand. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's yep. of uh, utmost importance that the second team in the New Zealand conference at the moment um, gets the Australia match because they'll be the they'll be it'll be fourth versus fifth, so second in the New Zealand conference will. Uh, will win a, a home, well, an away final, but in Australia, do you think that's of importance or not? Well, yeah, they'll want to be going to Australia before they'll want to go to South Africa, but you've got to think, they'll just want to avoid the Lions. Yeah. That's number one thing. I think they'll be fine going to play the Stormers uh, in South Africa. That they'll see is a lot more winnable than the Lions, that's yeah. for sure, but they'll just want to avoid the Lions. Australia, number one choice. Stormers will be number two, but... Yeah, at all costs, you don't want to go to Delight. South Africa. And really, you don't want to stay in New Zealand either. No. You don't want to stay in New Zealand and, and play the Crusaders either. That's just as bad. So for them, yeah, it's one of those two. And that's that's got to be where they'll go. Yeah. Um, and that's that's what it's all fighting over as well. When you look at the those three teams are so close. 
Um, one slip, and that could be it. That could be it. You down in fourth in, in New Zealand, and you're playing uh, the Crusaders or the Lions. Yeah. And that's that's chances of the season going anywhere out the window for that side. Absolutely. Um, but, you know, going to Australia, that's a guaranteed semi-final break. Well, it's, well, to be fair, if we look back at last year, the Brumbies Highlanders match in the quarterfinals last year. It's actually a good match and the, the Highlanders actually should have lost that match if it wasn't for a, a dubious held up call that Angus Gardner made. The Brumbies could have made that semi-final but it ended up only, up only being four points in it. So, the Brumbies at home, they're going to keep you, they're not going, you're not going to get smashed at the Brumbies. They may lose but they'll lose within seven which they've done uh, half, mm. of, half of the losses this year the Brumbies the Brumbies last year were a better team than they are this year oh yeah last year's better than this year yeah so it's hard, hard to say that they'll be more of a threat this year than they would be last year you think it'd be more scary that. if the Waratahs topped the, the Aussie conference because if the if the Waratahs put the 80 minute performance in they can be a New Zealand side well this year they, they struggle to get out onto the field I, I haven't seen the Waratahs actually play good, even when they play okay. Do you not see them against the Hurricanes? I mean, you saw them in the that? second half against the Hurricanes. They scored, what, four tries oh. to one that half. Yeah, but you've seen the Highlanders in the last seven minutes against the Cheetahs. <laughs> the Cheetahs are the Cheetahs, though. <laughs> anyway. But yeah, no, I, it's hard to say. The Waratahs can definitely attack better. Yeah. But I think the Brumbies... The Brumbies could be dangerous if they are allow allowed to control the match. I like, I reckon, they did against the Kings. They could just shut out their attack. If they can shut out the attack of a New Zealand team, which, if they can do that, then bloody well done. Yeah. Then, sure, they'll, they'll have a good chance. But I think it's, it's a different threat because they're very, very different styles of play. Also, no, I just also something I will mention is yep. this all comes after the Lions talk. So, yeah, that, of course, yeah. That break, you know, the, if the New Zealand ends up losing to the Lions, which I, I'm sure you're not predicting, but if New Zealand does lose to the Lions, New Zealand rugby will go into a bit of a, um, let's say, uh, a, not decline, but just emotionally might not be there as much as what they currently are. So that can completely change the perception within and the, the complete aura within this, uh, New Zealand rugby. But at the same time, if they end up destroying the Lions, they'll have the... Mm -hmm. A follow-on effect to the Super Rugby sides moving on to the finals. Confidence. Yeah. That's, that's what it's it. all about. Confidence, fully. Yeah, that's true. I think even if they lose one test, it could it could take a, a, a downward effect on confidence. Absolutely. Um, especially if it's not the third. Mm. Do you even think if the Crusaders something? lose to the Lions, that will destroy their confidence? Because they've won 11 straight games now. Oh, I don't, I don't know if you can say, if you could say that too much. I think if they get thrashed, yeah. it will. Yeah. But if, if it's like if they lose by 10, 15 points, they'll be just carry on like usual. Yeah. The Crusaders are an extremely professional <laughs> a franchise. Yeah. It, take, it takes a lot to rattle that they just seem to have some mental edge on, on sport there, and they just can't seem to get rattled. It's the no same as the All Backs. I mean, you, you've, yeah, you've been so is. successful for so long, it's just you're more confident within that culture i mean if you mm. come to australian rugby you know i i, I was talking to nick phipps about uh, about a month ago b before the uh the crusaders game Jeez. And, and he's like <laughs> i'm like do you think you've got a chance this this weekend he's like "Ooh, those kiwis are sure hard to beat and it's comfort he had no confidence so again it, it's the same sort of idea there i mean and england's mm. building a very strong culture at the moment and that loss to Ireland may not affect them or it may will it just depends how they react to it mm. it'll be interesting to see behind closed doors what opinion would be from the Lions you know not media because of course the media is just they're going to go yeah yeah of course we think they're going to win yeah but you know in the back of their mind you, it's be interesting to see what sort of confidence level they'll have uh coming here for this tour I but know the Irish is, boys Lions. would be confident but will the English and Welsh yeah that's true yeah. Uh, especially with the Welsh, who have, you know, an a, a awful matchup against New Zealand, <laughs> uh, in my well, opinion. Um, memories of last year will yeah. come flooding back. Yeah. yeah. So it, it's a mental game. Yeah. It's a mental confidence game. And it's going to be, oh, it's going to be really interesting to see. But you're right, it could have a big effect come finals time of the Super Rugby. But you could say the same for Australia as well. If they lose to, who are they playing? Scotland B? 
And Scot- whoever else they got well, over there? Yeah, Scotland, Scotland's got five of their best players out now. As of Scotland without Stuart Hogg. Is Stuart much Hogg, be. yeah. <laughs> a great laid laws out. Um, yeah, true. One of their wingers is out. Halo Klein just got uh, pushed out to, uh, yesterday. So, I mean... Tommy Seymour is not there. Tommy Seymour is the, yeah. the name I was looking for. The winger, um, yep. I mean, Scotland, it, it, the fifth in the world, and they're at an emotional high, especially with their win in the London Sevens on the weekend. Scottish rugby. <laughs> they beat New Zealand. They beat yeah, New Zealand. That yeah, was no. so great. Sevens is an all-time low, yeah, big time. Yeah. Yeah. Right here. That's, that, that's crazy. It's crazy because yeah. they won the most World Series, but mm-hmm. you're losing. They didn't even win one this year. No. One tour, one, one series. And Scot- Scotland defended their crown. I, I mean, I, I, I could rant on this for ages because I spent four, I was up till 4 a.m. watching the sevens. <laughs> um, but, I mean, I, I, I'm building my confidence in Scotland now because if you asked me four years ago, what do you think of Scottish mm-hmm. rugby? It's like, I, I hope they can win. But now I'm more like, mm-hmm. I think they've got a decent chance of winning. And if they continue to climb higher in the rankings, I'll be even more confident. So it's all the confidence and it's all about your mindset going into the match. Yeah, you said it all. Confidence. That's one word. Mm. One word that Australia doesn't have right now. No. Let's go on to Australia. Yes. Reds versus the Force. Should be a interesting match. Purely because the Force l- beat the Reds earlier in the year uh, in Perth. Um, mm-hmm. But overall, on paper, I, don't, I want to get your opinion on this, but the Reds have severely underperformed this year. On paper. Oh, massively. Yeah, you, their, their team is star-studded. <laughs> really, you look at all the big names out of there, but they're old big names. Yeah, they're not they're not not modern day big names so no. much. The, five, ten years ago, well, five years ago, we'll give them the credit. The, the, this team would have gone close to winning the competition, yeah. but they're nowhere near that this year. No. Um, I'm interested what you think. Speaking of the Australian Conference, you mentioned earlier that the Reds don't have a chance. Mm. If they win here against the Force, even if they only take four points. They're only uh, three points behind the Brumbies. Oh, that is the, right. The Brumbies could easily trip up. They're playing the Haguaras, I think, this weekend. Haguaras, so yes. And then they the, lose that, I, but the and Brumbies you're, you're, have, you're game on. I think the Brumbies also have the Force um, and a couple New Zealand sides, or maybe one New Zealand side to go. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, I, I, I don't know the Reds run home, but um, they haven't been winning match, much, many matches at all. Well, the Reds have got the Blues, and then they've got the Brumbies. As well, that'll mm, be massive yeah, if they can do be, that. And yep. then they finish with the Highlanders as well. Yeah. So, uh, and they're the Brumbies, away from home, I think, most of them, aren't they? Yeah, they're away to the Blues, so they're home to the Brumbies, and then away to the Highlanders to finish off. So, yeah, it, it could. I think. I think there's still a chance, but really, they need results. Like yeah. they need to beat the four. They need to beat them quite five points. Obviously, is ultimate mm. result, but they're still in for chance. I think uh, uh, the Reds of doing this and. Mm. It, We've seen glimpses of what they can do. Absolutely. What do you what do you think about what what the likes of Cooper and that have added to the team? Do you, do you think he's come along in the season? I mean, uh, to be fair, I, I, I maybe was a bit harsh on the Reds because I forgot how they actually performed against. The, they didn't lose by much against the New Zealand sides this year. Mm. Basically, the Crusade, the Crusaders, thirty seconds should have lost. Yeah, uh, and it was a penalty <laughs> that shouldn't have been blown. Um, yeah. The Reds should have won that match, but. Um, they didn't. Uh, the, the Canes were a very similar story. I can't remember the store, uh, the score line, but the Reds at home are a bit of a different story than when they go away. But this match, obviously, a lot of bearing. Um, the force, a lot of injuries at the moment, a lot of garbage happening behind the scenes. Um, you know, obviously getting spanked by the, the, the Highlanders. I think no one saw 49 points. I mean, if you predicted not 49 points, um, uh, you're telepathic. Um, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do think the Reds should win this match. I don't think they'll lose to the Force twice in the season. Do you uh, think the Force, yeah, because if they pick up a win here, they'll go above the Reds? I, 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 I mean, I would love to see the Force make the finals, but yeah. the, the way that they played against the Highlanders, I just don't, I just don't. I still, I mean, the great thing about the conference system is that the Australians still have a chance. They're at home. I mean, if it, we're away, I'd be like, the season's over. But the Aussies have a, uh, a quarterfinal at home. And whoever can uh, leverage that um, at home, can the home crowd support behind them, if that can happen, if they, people actually want to show up to the match, <laughs> they will have a better chance than a lot of people expect. Yeah, that home, home crowd will make a big difference Absolutely. for that one. I'm going with the Reds for this one. Uh, I, I thought this was quite tough to pick, mm. but I'm still going by the Reds by 12. 
What's yours? Uh, I don't want to copy you, but I think it's going to be a similar <laughs> scoreline. Maybe the Reds even by more, purely because of mm. their confidence levels at the force at the moment. But maybe they completely turn around and uh, prove us all wrong and beat the Reds twice, twice in a row. But you got to remember the force, though. Turning around that win against the, the Jaguars, though. I know, but it wasn't, you can't, wasn't they didn't back it that. up. They didn't back they it up. They got smashed the week before by the Sharks. I know. I don't know what the hell's happening. You, you just don't I, I think the Force could easily win this match. Uh -huh. Back the other way. Yeah. They could easily win it. It, it depends. The Australian teams are so mistake-ridden. Yeah. You just don't know what's going to happen. Absolutely. It, whoever starts best should go on and win it. I, th I think the Reds. The Reds are my pick. And I think they should make the end of the season quite interesting mm. if they can pop up. You know, get those top three, the Brumbies, the Reds, the Waratahs, all sitting around, you know, mid to low 20s. And it could be an exciting finish for a really crappy exactly. conference. That that, that's the, the, that's a great, the good thing about the conference system. I've got nothing <laughs> against the conference system. I just don't like how it's distributed. So you like it, but you don't like it. That's all right. Yeah. Because we're up to our next game now. Hmm. And this one, Sunwolves and the Cheetahs. Yeah. Now, oh, it, this is tough to pick because I was it impressed is. by the Sunwolves, but you just never know what it's Sunwolves Tokyo. will turn up. And, and the Cheetahs as well have had a really crap long tour. tour. Yeah, long tour and as well. Where are their heads? In a, in a winnable state? Don't think so. Hmm. I think Do the Sun Wolves, especially, I mean, there's a lot of hype happening in Japan, uh, obviously around the World Cup draw. I mean, we, I need to have your discussion on my channel on what you think of the World Cup draw, but Japan, I mean, there's, uh, you know, as you said, I think earlier, that they've got one of their strongest ever Sun Wolves sides. Um, uh, the Cheetahs, again, coming from New Zealand, getting smacked by 54 points by the Hurricanes. Um, getting smacked the week before that by the Blues, I think. Was it the Blues the week before that? Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, so, the Sun Wolves, good chance. Uh, last time they were in Tokyo, they beat the, sh the, the Bulls, I think, the Sun Wolves. So, they'll go in with some confidence. Yeah, they got a, certainly got a chance. I've got them. I've got them by a thin margin, hmm. just by three. Sun Wolves win it. Home advantage. I think they will be not too downheartened about how they played against the Sharks either, because they put in a really good effort for most of that match. Yeah. And they were taking a lot of confidence from that. Uh, some of their play was was superb, and just that last ten minutes, they could have really had a chance. Uh, picking the Sun Wolves by three. What about you? Um, I, I'm 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 too Doesn't close want to copy. <laughs> I've got to polarize you. I've got to be different than you. But I, I, I'm also the way we've agreed is the Sun Wolves. I, I'm going to go the Sun Wolves. Sun Wolves uh, by six points. Six points. We'll still both get the bonus point if it's close to that. Anyway, so that's all right. Uh, it should be a good match though. I think the Cheetahs are, are good enough, but they need to be at home if they're going to really do anything special uh, against any of the teams. Really, uh, Sun Wolves to pick up another win, and uh, they've kind of become so. I want to ask you too about the Sun Wolves. Um, I, I talked about it a bit last week. Um, about the Sunwolves being that forgotten team, you know, the underdog, the forgotten underdog, because of what the Kings are doing now mm. in the competition. Uh, do you agree with that? It's interesting. Are, are they our underdog now, or are they just a, 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 a home side only? I, I, I don't have the Sunwolves won away from home. Um, in the competition, uh, they've won. Well, they won what, so. two matches last year, maybe three matches last year. Uh, and they've won one match this year. I, they lost to the Kings in Singapore. I remember that. Um, so they didn't beat yeah, the they've Kings. They've just won the one, which was against the Bulls. They was yeah. at home. Yeah. So the Sun Wolves, they're an under, uh, underdog away at home. I think it's a different story. Um, but again, a Japan, as we saw against South Africa in the 2015 Rugby World Cup, <laughs> anything can happen. Yeah, that's true. That's true. The Kings, are, they're the underdog favorites. They're my underdog mm. favorites anyway. They are the team. They are the team to beat at the moment. The Kings. I don't <laughs> agree with Scott that. from the other side. The next match. This is the big one, though. This is the one we want to talk about. Yeah. Highlanders, Waratahs. Where you go? Go for it. Well, go crazy. Give me, give me some context. I can rant. Go but crazy. You want to give me some context. Go crazy about your Waratahs. All right, the Waratahs. Are they going to win? Do they have a chance? What's yeah, they their got problems? a chance. Why yes. can't they play rugby? Why can't they catch a ball? Why are so many good star-studded players? So incapable of playing rugby. Well, it's a few things. First of all, confidence. <laughs> we've talked about we've talked about confidence for about ten minutes. Very, very good example here. The Waratahs players are not confident enough in their own abilities, and that is because of the culture and the coaching of Daryl Gibson. I think Daryl Gibson was a great player. I respect him, but he is a Kiwi. He is not 
not he doesn't know the Australian rugby style as much as we could. The traditional ru Australian rugby style of you can go back to the late nineties, early noughties, or even um, the twenty fifteen Rugby World Cup or the twenty uh, the twenty eleven um, Rugby Championship. Australia has its own way of playing. They can't try to copy the. Uh, the, the the Kiwis, they've got to do the simple things right. They've got to be confident in their own abilities and they've got to do uh, and respect their own players. I don't know if you saw the match. I think you did see the match, the World Tires versus the Rebels. Yep. Did you see the confrontation that the uh, Michael Hooper had with Angus Gardner in the first 15 minutes? Uh, talking when, when the, that yellow card, about the same time as that? Yeah. So they yeah, had yeah, the yellow it, card, yeah. and then there was another stupid penalty that Dean Mum gave away. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. Angus Gardner, again, called time off, had a, a two-minute conversation with Michael Hooper. And he's like, I am frustrated. I really am frustrated. I've told the boys twice, and they just yeah. are not listening to me. They're yeah. giving shit. That is a toxic environment. You can solely mm -hmm. buy his word choice alone. Um, you mm -hmm. could say it was in the, within the war of battle, but it, they've been doing it for the last... Uh, this entire season is that they don't trust each other. They are not in a culture that is motivating each other to be their best. And you've seen it. Israel Folau, he is below his best. Uh, Bernard Foley, he looks great when he works with Nick Phipps because they know each other so well. But when Nick Phipps either works with uh, Mac Mason or works with uh, Bryce Hegarty, who I, I think has got no X factor to him, or uh, even with Jake Gordon. I like Jake Gordon, but I'm not sure about the chemistry of Jake Gordon at 9 and 10. And then at 12, uh, you've got Rob Horn or you have David Horwitz. They are, they, I mean, they're, they're taking a long, lo much longer than usual to gel. And this is the problem I've got with the Waratahs is that A, they're not, mold not, not motivated enough. B, their culture is not that of a champion team. It is not that of a, that is not professional. It is literally... Uh, I would use it because I'm studying business. It's a bunch of, it is a bunch of um, smaller businesses coming together as one to try and uh, try to form a collective um, a collective agreement. But everyone's got their own self interest that they're not working together as a cohesive unit. And this comes all the way from the top because the coach A is not structurally getting it right, and B is not uh, is not getting the best out of his players. And that's what Michael Checker did. Michael Checker is a great coach. You can completely see how he turns teams around. I'm not sure about his long-term pro risk. I'm going to have to wait and see, but he gets the best out of his players. He knows how to motivate their players. And just like any business or just like any enterprise, you've got to motivate the players. You've got to know what they do well and always give good feedback, what they're doing great, what they're doing badly, instead of everything that is negative at the moment. Does that make sense, or does that rant just go off off in a hundred different tangents? I'm going to add a little timestamp in the description of this video mm. for Scottish Canon Waratah's rants, mm. just because that's what everyone's been wanting this whole time. <laughs> but you brought up a few things. I'm going to mention more. Uh, the whole Hooper thing with that topic and talk with the ref, leadership. Do you think he's captain material? Definitely it's, captain it's, material definitely counting the material it's just he he is not respected enough by his peers do you do you think though he should have taken more leadership for that and, and made it his problem rather than like why why would you even say that to a referee well, the referees aren't going to give well, two shits what to, you think to, about that he to, should have been going to the players and, and laying down the law not he just did making that up twice. bad excuses it would be well, like it would be like um your boss telling you do this this way do this this way you do it exactly the way he wants to uh and then, well, that makes no sense. You do it the exact way he wants to, but it gives you something different. But he had a clear message, but he, the, the players went off in a different tangent. Team Mom, Team Mom, he gave two of the most stupid penalties away I've ever seen in the Waratah. A lazy offside penalty and a really stupid, uh, I think it was a ruck or a, a, a thing. I don't know what was up with Team Mom there, but he is a veteran. He is a leader within the side, but he's not leading yeah. from the front. Um, yeah. And even if you think back to the Blues game, in which I was on the sideline for, Michael Hooper, he, when he he rushed up early from a lineup ball, um, he was offside by about three meters by moving up before the lineup was out of the lineup. He he took ownership of that, and he 
told his players, but again, that when this post match interview, he goes and says, "Oh, I, I was, um, you know, I, I, I didn't lead from the front because of that." He he took accountability for his actions, but it didn't seem like, uh, you know, if a leader can take accountability for their actions, but if the people under him are not doing a, a good enough job, he can't blame himself. If you take too much responsibility, it's going to affect your own game. And unfortunately, mm. you've got you, you you've before you're a leader, you're actually a rugby player. That's true. That is very true. So you, you're solely putting this down to just the coach as a problem from the no, top. I'm putting it down you, to the culture. Any players. Well, what I, about players? To to be honest, I I think New South Wales has got some great talent coming through, but. I just don't think. I mean, Ned Hannigan is a good player. Um, some other great Jet Holloway is a good player, um, and these other players, McJulian and uh, Tom Robinson. All these players coming through will be um, wallabies in the future, and they'll be absolutely great players. But at the moment, they've got they're just another name. They're just not trained to play a game that is their own, and they're not doing the simple things right. And that is why I think. It, it comes down to culture. It comes down to coaching, and it comes. Honestly, I really think it does come down to the, the culture and the environment. Not just within the Waratahs. I, I think internally it's bad, but also on the outside in the stream rugby as a whole. And I mean, the big story this week is that there's a special meeting between the Rugby Union Players Association in Australia and the, the AIU. Uh, people on that board include players like Bernard Foley and um, Stephen Moore. They're leaders who uh, need to be solely responsible for their own Super Rugby sides, but they're being caught up in someone else's drama, and that structurally comes all the way up from the top, and that's the problem. So, given the circumstances we currently sit on right mm. now, Waratahs say they do top the Australian Conference. Yeah. Does Gibson keep his job? No. Oh, no. No. I... I... You know, I, I don't care if the Waratahs lose. I really don't. As long as they put in a good performance. If the te- if the, if, the, if a team is better than the Waratahs, like the Crusaders were in that match at LAN Stadium earlier this year, I am more than happy with the Waratahs losing. I'm accepting that there's a better side. But when the Waratahs beat themselves, <laughs> like they did against the Kings, like they did against the Hurricanes in the first half, like they did against quite... A, the Brumbies, pretty much mo- five of their seven losses this year, or maybe, uh, yeah, probably four or five of their losses this year, the Waratahs have beaten themselves before the uh, other teams have beaten them. The Waratahs should be on six or seven wins for the season, but they're not. They're on four. And they've got an opponent, of course, which we are going to talk about. Yes. The Highlanders, they're, they're looking hot. They, they are, are looking Highlanders. hot. Eight, eight in a row. You can't really argue with that. No. Um, and they're at home. Yeah. The Waratahs are traveling. Yeah. Uh, I know you're still going to pick them. You're still going to pick I'm the still, Waratahs. I've got to stay loyal. It's just like the captain's got to stay with his ship until it sinks. <laughs> well, they're sinking pretty bad. Well, no, they're still slightly afloat. I'll give them that. They're still there or thereabouts. Uh, what what reasons do you think they're going to possibly win this game? What, what advantage do they have over a Highlanders team on a winning streak at home. They haven't played an 18-minute performance. As soon as it What starts, makes you think they're going to do that this weekend? I'm, I, I haven't said that, have I? I said yeah, if yeah, the Waratahs yeah. put an 18-minute performance in, which they haven't done so all season, the, the, for that Rebels game, they play, basically played for 30 or 40 minutes of it. They put 50 on the Rebels. They scored three tries in the final 10 minutes. They scored three tries in the 10 minutes just before halftime. That's six of their eight tries. Um, and the other try, uh, uh, but I mean, if they give away eight straight penalties in the first ten minutes, fifteen minutes against the Highlanders, it'll be twenty-eight nil within the first 10, 15 minutes. But if not, if the Waratahs in there for the grind, if they're in there uh, and completely some, something clicks, something they just feel confident, they start building confidence throughout the match, they will be able to beat the Highlanders. But if not, the Highlanders have got the X actors of Ben Smith and Aaron Smith and Lee Misoparang. We all know the big names in the, in the Highlanders. But the, the, if the, the, the Waratahs can click, they are the one of the top three teams in the competition. Big call. It is a big call. Was, it really is. Imagine. The Waratahs' best is top three in the competition. 
How much are they going to win by? It won't be a small margin if they do. I'll do one or two points. But um, it's going to be a cracking game, assuming the Waratahs show up and play rugby. But I haven't done so in 11 matches. I hope they're practicing how to catch a ball. Exactly. That's and, all they, I can say. and even these matches after the buys, they've had two buys now. After their buys, they've looked flat for the first 20, 25 minutes. Um, I, I honestly, I don't put it, well, I don't know what it's down to, but something has to change. You can't just keep going along with a, a, a dog. Uh, it, it's a dog, and you you you've got to get rid of it if it's not doing if, if it's not doing anything good. So um, I, I, I'm just using random examples here, but I, I'm just very passionate about the current situation of the Waratahs because I know they're capable of more. When you're at fifty percent, basically the entire season, I get pissed off. Don't you think, though, if Australian rugby look at this and they see that the Waratahs have stopped, topped the Australian pool, they'd consider that a success? No. They're not that, they're not that stupid. But they've topped the pool, though. They're the I best don't, team. I don't care if they've topped the pool. They'll they haven't they're won, the best. Australia has not won a game against New Zealand. Super rugby sides, is it 30 or 35, 40 straight matches? That is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. But I can't see them going to chop their best team's coach because of that the, the, they, you, you, I'm talking Australia as a whole New, New South Wales they need you, you know the, the Australian club Sydney club rugby is at one of the strongest points in the moment the sheet shield the first grade in Australian rugby at the moment is at a almost an all time high some people may disagree but being around that environment weekly Australian club rugby is absolutely great but it's that, that middle tier that's the problem. And that problem is going to be fixed by radical structural change. And I, I cannot wait for that ARU announcement because it, it's completely needed. This uncertainty at the moment and this, uh, this garbage at the moment is not good for the game of rugby. It disenfranchises the fans. And even the most passionate fans, which I am, it completely takes me out of the game of rugby. And sometimes I just don't want to be a part of it. And that, that sucks, but it's the truth. Anything else you want to add about the Waratahs? I mean, I'm that, is that the rant everyone was looking for? <laughs> I think I so. Mean, I mean, uh, you that, feel free to add anything more if you like. I, I mean, I, I I had to do a couple of shots of chili sauce because of the Waratahs. So, <laughs> I, why do you think I'm letting this all out now? Go for it. That's what the people want. That's, that's why what, they want you back. That's what, I let, that's what, what I've let it all out. The, I mean, it's just some people are just get too pessimistic and just don't actually understand the circumstances of it. So, um, you know, Australian rugby is in the hole at the moment. It really is. It's the middle tier. It's a super rugby. Um, and, and, you know, high performance is a big problem at the moment. But the AI, you've got to do something about it. If they don't, uh, the Australian rugby is completely going to die. And, and and that's the unfortunate truth. I might have to move over to Scotland or, or England to be... Uh, that's something that I would love to be in is an environment where rugby is at the forefront, which you get in New Zealand, which people get in South Africa. And mm-hmm. England, well, it's football man. Rugby is still huge in in England as well. Unfortunately, I can't say that about Australia. That's true. And that's that's a shame. Uh, coming after the 2000s, when rugby was basically at the same level of, of league, now it's not. Mm. So yeah. it comes down to the, the administration and nothing else. That was good. I mean, it was good to let good it all out. But, chest. Um, you know, if someone sees it or someone reacts to it, I would love for, to, to get some responses. I would love to get people's reactions to it. Um, but, you know, I'm just being completely honest. And as a person that would want, you know, is wants to implement strategy in business and stuff like that, it just really annoys me when I can see that strategically and, and, and things are, are not working. Yeah? And people have to do something about it. So you're going for the Waratahs. I am. I'm, I'm going, going to Highlanders. stay loyal. Yeah. Highlanders by 22. And that's <laughs> I, being nice. I feel, I feel bad Benno, that we haven't talked more about the Highlanders here. The Richie Benno is coming out. Uh, 22. Uh, I'll talk about the Highlanders. Yeah, go for it. Please. I already have already. I've already, I've already mentioned the main points. Oh, They're on a enough. winning streak. They're hot. They've got first fives coming out of their nose. Marty Banks is playing amazing. Sopawanga can't even make his way off the bench at the moment. They're scoring tries for fun. They've got players like Rob Thompson that's going to cut through the Waratahs and leave them for dust every step of the way. Uh, man to man, I, I, I can't see the Waratahs even getting anyone out. On paper, you could say they have advantages, but the way they've played on the road, 
you can't see anything happening at all except for a big Highlanders win under the roof as well. Good old Forsyth Bar. It will be a big win, cracking win. Twenty-two. I'm being nice because you're on because you're on the show here today. I, I'm, but otherwise, if you weren't here, it would probably be forty-four. I'm I'm only <laughs> I'm only picking the Waratahs because I have every match of the season. Uh, next year, when it comes to Super Lou, and if I take it more seriously, I'll obviously weigh up the pros and cons of both teams, and we'll make a judgment. I should be tipping the Highlanders, but I'm going to be tipping the Waratahs because they're my team, and I've got I've done it all season, and I'm not going to get away from that with four rounds left of the season. Fair enough. Fair enough, too. Let's move on. Yes, that's Let's move on to probably a match we're not going to talk about very much because it's the Rebels uh, against the Crusaders. You think uh, this will be a record much... win? Oh, well, well, no, I, I hope the record stays because it's the Crusaders against the, the Waratahs. 96 <laughs> or something back in 2000. I can't remember. But... Yeah, about that year. That's... <laughs> It could be, yeah. The way the way the way the rebels are playing, but they are at home, which I guess might count for something. No, um, but the Crusaders, the Cru well, it may, it may mean ten less points that the rebels will concede. Possibly, it might be eighty something to three, but uh, it should, it'll be a thrashing. It will uh, this be. has to be a thrashing. I'll be surprised if it's anything short of a fifty you think, pointer. You think Crusaders um, will choose a second rate team this week? Uh, they may risk a couple. Yeah, it's possible, of course, because none of the teams have been named when we're recording this as well, yeah. so we have no idea who's playing. Um, but I, I think the Crusaders could change their whole 15 and still put out a quality team with a game plan that will beat the Rebels, especially with the way the Rebels are going losing key players, which they don't have many to lose in the first place. And the way these season's gone, I just see the Crusaders will run all over that. And probably they'll probably put a few key men on the bench, sit them on there. If, if anything, anything goes have. awry... Yeah, just slap them on after 20 minutes. I mean, Reds, the Rebels beat the, the Reds, the Rebels beat the Brumbies. And no one expected that. Um, so, uh, are they going to be a, a conference leader at home? Doubt it. Very, very, un extremely unlikely. Yeah. Strange to think. I wonder what the odds are. But... Uh, they're probably probably suspended. Being, well, the teams haven't yeah. been named, so they probably don't have odds up yet. Yeah. But I'd imagine that would be a dollar one, dollar two, yeah. something like that. It, it, Crusaders just looked. Look good against the best teams. Yeah. Um, are you going to put a margin on it? Oh, 70 points. 70 points? I'm but, interested to see. I, I, mean, I, 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 feel, I feel bad we haven't talked about the Rebels. Um, uh, Tony McGann, it, it, the Rebels coach, he seems like he's a great guy. Uh, he seems like he's a good coach. But when you've got 20 injuries, you, you can't do anything about it. When their best players are, are you know, Reese Hodge, he's, he, he's not going to play this week because of concussion. Sean McMahon is. Uh, been out for most of the season, uh, Toby Smith, etc., etc. They've got some great players on paper. Deborah Seen has been out, I think. Mm. Unfortunately, they just don't have that firepower and that, the consistency to even challenge. If they, all of their teams of players are fit, maybe the Rebels would have, it would be a different story, but unfortunately, it's not. It's not to see them even having a chance, even if they're 40 fit, really. Yeah. Comparatively, the way the Crusaders are playing. Well, I mean, if you, is, if, do you think the Rebels would be this bad if they had all their players fit at the start of the season and they didn't have this AIU garbage around it? It might be a No, I don't think they'd be this bad. I yeah. think they'd, they'd probably have gotten results against other Australian franchises more often. Yeah. Maybe the odd touring South African side. But I, even, you know, they'll probably challenge like the Blues or, or you know, give give the Highlanders are saying a bit of a run for their yeah. money but the Crusaders they, they just look unbeatable yeah they just don't look like losing they don't look like they're going to concede a try you they, think they, they just you, you think they're going to go undefeated though for the whole season I yeah that's that's because oh. at the, the end of the played, day the finals matches matter you know they, they're going yeah, to top sure. they're the top team in Super Rugby they've got four rounds left they're more than likely not going to lose their top spot are uh, they sh are they going to choke when it comes to the finals? The professionalism of the Crusaders in the past, probably not. But I've seen it happen too many times before. Well, they finish up with the Highlanders, and then that's their second last match, and the Hur Hurricanes last yeah. away. So that last match is going to be their biggest. Yeah. But the way that they played, you've got to imagine that the Hurricanes are sitting there studying hmm. how they can combat or how they can turn that around what happened when they played a couple of weeks ago yeah. that's going to be huge i think until then oh, even the highlanders i find that hard to hard to see they're going to go down to the uh to the highlanders the crusaders are at home even harder to beat them so it just, it just looks unlikely I'd, I'd say crusaders will go right to the final round and that's where they'll face their biggest test second leg against the against the hurricanes mm. is going to be the toughest ass in wellington as well yeah it's but uh, 
I'd, I'd, if I picked that right now, I'd say they'd win it and would go undefeated. And, and from there on, like you say, who would bet against them uh, to go the whole way? Yeah. Especially, what, what are they going to do? At home to... The, uh, it'll be, it'll be the, it'll be the South African last, team. Yeah, yeah the Sharks. at home to the Sharks, they'll smoke that, no problems. Yeah. And then probably a New Zealand derby match, yeah. followed up by the Lions, Lions and Hurricanes or, yeah. sort of thing. You look at it like that. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's pretty it's doable. It. Yeah, it's pretty doable. Uh, I've got them. I've got them only by thirty-five. I've been kind of nice to the Rebels, uh, just because it's a road trip match, yeah. and you never know what happens in Australia. Yeah, but I think they'll do it quite easily against the old Rebels. Right, next match up, we're off to South Africa, and the Bulls, the hapless Bulls, up against the Canes. Um, well, the only thing I can really give any hope to the Bulls on this one, because they're at home, much like yeah. the Rebels. The home crowd advantage counts for something, but uh, the Hurricanes, like how how good is that bounce back uh, last yeah. week to thrash the Cheetahs? It was at home. I don't see that the Bulls really going to offer much resistance here to the Hurricanes. It, it is the Hurricanes' road trip, though, and mm. it'll be interesting to see how they travel because the chances are they could be going back there uh, for their playoffs match as yeah. well. So this is going to be interesting to learn how they actually fare on the road, but do you give the Bulls any chance? No, no, I don't, unfortunately. I, I don't like Bowen Barrett at fullback as well. Um, I don't <laughs> yeah. know if that was an experiment or not, but he's the best ten in the world and he should stay there. Um, mm. it, it, they should be, Hurricane should win this match quite convincingly, maybe 20 points or something. But um, the Bulls, again, inconsistent in, in, in front of their home fans at Pretoria, one of the most hostile environments in the world. Will uh, will the uh, the Hurricanes uh, crack, it, crack the whip and... Uh, and have one of the worst games of the old time potentially but I think this is out of the line <laughs> it's not, nothing in it for the Bulls either really no. uh, they're only on 15 points they're not going to catch the Stormers uh, it's even a uh, taller ask them to catch the Sharks which is uh, you know on 8 points more than the Stormers uh, so the, there's no hope the Stormers no. got uh, the, the Bulls I should say have got nothing to really play for here except for pride and the ability to upset that log jam yeah. in the middle of the New Zealand conference which again like the Chiefs we spoke of before the Hurricanes need the points I tell you that African one conference is even worse than the Australian conference it's awful Ooh. in regards to its competitiveness yeah, yeah it's, it's pretty cut and dry yeah. all the way through there the Stormers had that that top spot wrapped up when they're on that winning streak before they toured yeah so the, the, <laughs> They've got nothing to really play for either, except yeah, match it's, practice. It's just, it's just annoying. It's just annoying. I mean, these some of these games mean nothing, and it's just uh, as a fan and as a you know as a player, you, you just get a bit uh, ahead of yourself and just think, oh, what, let's just get to finals. You know what I mean? Mm, yeah, and then the other African conference, which really would just swap the Cheetahs and the Sunwolves for the the Haguaros and the Kings. Mm. We're being for saying different. The, the Southern Kings are dead last in that conference. Mm. That's how messed up it is. That they would be second in Africa one, and they would be second in Australia as well. Yeah, it's, it's just absurd. Yeah. The Kings. That's exactly why favorite. the format needed change, and and you're you're exactly proving my point of that Super Rugby debate we had, which but it's went going to be the same way. though. It's going to be exactly no, the it's... same. <laughs> you're still going to get the same results as it's, this. It's going to be more competitive. The Jaguars will get even better with the more consistent uh, road matches and. You'll have uh, we have the best four teams in South Africa be up against each other. The Kings' best will go and filter through the uh, you know, and the Cheetahs will filter through the best South African side. So um, while I, I think it's a step backwards in regards to South Africa because they've definitely got the talent pool for five teams, um, that uh, that African conference next year is going to be great. And um, that Australian conference, while it's going to be the the, the weakest next year as well, uh, at least they'll be more competitive with the Sun Bulls. In it. Well, that's true. The Sunwolves might actually pick up a few more wins. It'll be yeah. the most successful year for that. But what are we talking about? The Bulls versus the Hurricanes yeah. is where we're at. And we're both going Canes. What do you reckon? About 20? Okay. Yeah, about 20. Yeah, my pick was by 24. Hurricanes pick up the win from that one. Okay, we've got three to go. Sharks, yeah. Stormers. This one's a big match. one. Yeah. This is this is probably the big match from Africa for mine. Um, the Sharks, oh, they, they avoided quite a bit of embarrassment last week, I think, against Sunwolves. I think... They wouldn't have been expected to lo lose that game, no. and and they would have, yeah, that, that would have been a, a huge upset if they they didn't pick up the win against the Sunwolves. They they were hot at the end, and they'll need to take that back home as well. I guess the Stormers, who, you know, picked up a win as well, and they're not looking mm. too shabby and showed just how good they can be. 
Um, Tough of match, course, this one. in South I think Africa, this is the hardest to pick. Oh, maybe yeah. one of the hardest to pick. One of the hardest to pick. Mm. I, I think either side can easily win this one. Yeah. Um, have you got a favourite? I've got the Sharks. You've got the Sharks. Yes, because every time I picked against them, they've proven me wrong. <laughs> so it's a bit like me and the Cheaters. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I haven't picked the Cheaters one game I think this season. Um, but, or maybe I have. Maybe shows you my place on the table. But um, the, the Sharks. Uh, the the, the Sharks. The, the, I like the Sharks. The Sharks are a really good side. Again, uh, from what I don't watch many South African matches, uh, to be brutally honest. I only see the South Africans mainly when they come over here, or if the Waratahs are playing them. Um, but I do like the uh, I do like the Sharks. I think they're a really good and organised team. Defensively, very good. Yeah, and their attack is. I think their attacks progress quite well this year as well. They could be a threat in the finals. But I'm going to go opposite here. I'm going to go for the Stormers. There we go. Finally, it's yes. taken the whole seven matches but we finally got there finally got one opposite and that's where i'm going to increase my lead up the leaderboard as well um i'm going stormers by five um purely because you can't judge the stormers by just their tour at home in africa i guess that's a selective that bias i've currently got so it um. is like their team is on paper it's really good and they, they just can't travel and yeah. we've known plenty of teams like that they can't travel we'll win every game in africa but they can't come to Australia or New Zealand. Um, I think the Stormers have got that bug, big time. They're really talented side, um, capable international players throughout. Um, and against the Sharks, if they can shut down the little attack that the Sharks have, I think the Stormers could well and truly be in this one. Um, I'm going for them by five. You got a margin on your Sharks? Sharks by six. Six. Now, see, Brett will be hating me now. I've picked mm. against the Sharks. He won't be very happy. No. Um, moving on. Second last well. game. This one. Yeah, this one, it could be. I think if anyone's going to blow this one out, it'll mm. be the home team. Uh, Haguaros Brumbies, uh, of course, it is a home match yeah. for the Haguaros. The Brumbies, I don't know if they'll be able to bring this one down to, to play that low, I mean, slow, forward-based South... game. I mean, they have to travel from South Africa to Argentina, so it's a lot of it's a lot of different diff, uh, distance for the, the Australian mm. teams to travel, especially to Argentina. Um, I don't think it'll be any better next year when it comes to the format change, but. I, I, honestly, I'm going to have to get away from the Brumbies here purely because I want the Waratahs to top the conference. So I'm probably going to pick the Jaguars. <laughs> I, I don't think that the Brumbies will be able to play that game against the Jaguars no. because I, I think that the Jaguars will beat them at mm. that style of game just because of their pack and their forwards are so good. And then if they do use their backs, they, they win that advantage as well. Is the Jaguars uh, discipline getting better? Yeah, yeah, it's definitely a lot better this mm. year, yeah. They still are, I think, leading the yellow cards for teams. <laughs> um, but it's it's definitely a lot better. Not as many yellow cards as in yeah, just previous so years. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well that's what they're like, isn't it? So if I can I can have a look. Yellow cards by team. The Reds are actually leading the way with <laughs> ten. Well, the Jaguars right behind them though on nine. Yeah. Uh, the force and the hurricanes are, are sitting there on Waratahs. eight. So where are the Waratahs? Seven. They've got seven. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's pretty even, it's pretty close, but you look at the Brumbies down the bottom, they've only conceded five. Hmm. So that could be a pretty big factor, almost twice as many by the Haguaros as well. Yeah. Um, it always is a factor of them, is their discipline. Whether they can play a clean game and get it in. But I'm going for the Haguaros to win, I've got them by 12 hmm. over the Brumbies. Uh, did you have I'll a go Jaguars by three, closer game than you think. Three, close yeah. game. Could be. Oh, I think it'll depend a lot on the weather yeah. as well. Yeah, I if think just, some... I just think it'll be very forward and slash yeah. defensive orientated. So I just don't mm. think there'll be huge score lines like some Jaguars games are against those Kings or the the, the Sharks or uh, the New Zealand teams where both teams just open the gates for each other, but the uh, they always yeah. seem to go over the top of the Jaguars away from home. Yep. The, nice segue. Nice segue. Beautiful segue into our final match of the round: Lions versus. The Glorious Kings. The Kings of Super Rugby. Are you, are you like picking that, the man. Kings? No. <laughs> I like them, but I just can't see them against the Lions. Yeah. The Lions really are only going to lose to, if they play full strength, they're only going to lose to a couple of teams in the competition. Yeah, a couple of New Zealand um, sides, yeah. Yeah, I can't see them really losing to anyone else. They seem to like resting uh, players against the Jaguars, but yeah. they won't have that problem again. No. Um, no, I just think they'll be too good. Um, you know, like I say, the Kings play a nice style. They're attacking. They're fun to watch. But the Lions are just too good. Yeah. Just too good. Too good of players. And I think 
I'll save all my joy picking for the Kings uh, later in the competition when it's they have some Sunday, winnable games. It's a Sunday night game now, I think. It's a Sunday afternoon game in uh, in South Africa, so it's ten thirty our time. Oh, well, my night. Sunday night. Yeah, I think it's twelve thirty your time. One. If I'm going up on the Fox Sports here. Thirty on a Sunday. Yeah. That is ludicrous. <laughs> I'll still be saying up for it though. <laughs> to watch the Lions. Oh yeah, the Lions good. Uh, any hope for the Kings? You no. Got any slimmer? No. I, if the Kings win, Kings win here, I, I don't know what will happen in the in the, in the media about cutting the two teams, but. Uh, the Lions <laughs> should win this match quite convincingly. Maybe put 20 or 30 points on it, but maybe it'll be more of a blowout. The Kings are so inconsistent, man. I, um, I, I just never can pick him. I can just never tip him. I don't think I've tipped them once this season either. Oh, that's, see, that's where you're going wrong. <laughs> you haven't picked the Kings of Super Rugby. Nah. That's a problem you're having. You're picking the Waratahs, you're not picking I the chose, Kings. There we go. Uh, my, my team I always like to pick is the Force, but they never win. <laughs> that's, a, that's a terrible one to pick. The force away down there. I suppose they've won three times, so that's something for you. Yeah. Um, well, the, the Kings have really, really pretty much put up this season this year. Four wins. I mean, who would have picked the Kings to get four wins this year? No. No one, really. And and against the Lions, they've only lost once. One yeah. loss all season. But again, they, it's, they good, got a, it's good the Kings aren't uh, are winning matches, though, as well. It adds more of a well, layer sure. of unpredictability to it. Um, and it gives... You know, those players that aren't good enough for Super Rugby next year, at least it gives them some positivity um, in in a time that's quite dark in Super Rugby at the moment. Half the team, half the Kings team has been snapped up by the franchises. Yeah. There's about four or five players that were snapped up this week by other African franchises. Yeah. So there's going to be no problem with that. They've already no. proven that they're good enough players. See, that, especially that, these bats. That's the problem Australia's having at the moment, is that because the, the Kings are pretty much gone, I think everyone can say that, but... Because it's pretty much, I would say it's a toss-up between the Force and the Rebels. I think the hmm. the Rebels probably are going to stay over the Force. But um, the Australian rugby franchises, they can't, they can't, you know, they can't. The 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 Force and Rebels, they can't uh, get um, you know in the transfer market. And uh, the even the Australian hmm. Waratahs and the Brumbies and stuff, they can't go and pick off the the Rebels in the the, the Force because no one knows yeah. what's happening. So. <laughs> Yeah, that's true too. Yeah, no, no players to pick up and strengthen from. No. Yeah, that's a good point. I never thought about that. But yeah, at least, you know, to be fair, the Kings don't know either. Yeah. Well, the how, Kings how know. You know the Kings not going to come Kings out and go. Gone. Uh, unless, unless they come around and say we completely. And instead, we've decided to go with 18 teams, but we'll have three conferences of six teams. Well, I'm, I'm completely for that, but I, I just think the current way in which it works is pretty garbage. I don't even think they know what they're going to do. Really, but we're not going to talk about them. <laughs> we're not I, talking did about I say, that. I don't. I did say Sansa, didn't I? I did. Oh, I you failed. did. Right at the end. Right. At I, the just end. Sansa, right. I just said Sansa. I just said Sansa again. <laughs> anyway, yeah. final game. I got the Lions. I got the Lions by only eighteen. I think yeah, it'll be a high I, score. I, I, Lots of points. There. Yeah, maybe yeah. What, fifty to twenty or something. Something yeah. close like that. Uh, oh, not yeah. close, but something enjoyable like that. Lions are really enjoyable to watch. I really like the way they play in. The Kings are no different, but they just uh, against a very balanced Lions team. I just don't think they've got any chance. Yeah, I think the way that the Lions play will probably allow the Kings to play the way they want to play as well, Absolutely. which could open a nice, free-flowing game at what half past midnight. God, on a 10 Sunday. Ten thirty here. Yeah, it's uh, it's a strange Jesus. time. It's going to be one thirty before it's finished. That's going to be worth it because it's going to be a great game for the Kings. Well, that is it. We're done for round fourteen of Super How Rugby. How long was that? It's, an hour and a bit. A, okay. A super mega an hour triple, and 20 minutes. triple. Jesus, half super, of that time super. was my rant. <laughs> it was, but it was worth it. That's what that's what the people want. Have a, have a Waratahs a frustrated rant. Waratahs fans opinion. That's all right. That's all right. Thanks for joining me anyway. No um, problem. Do you want to give any shout outs to yourself? Uh, where where you, can you everyone get, find you? You guys know more than enough uh, yeah. why, where to find me. Um, if it was a, a, a collab, was, look out for us on the drive mall. Uh, we're both on the drive mall on Friday. We'll be talking about referees. Um, so that's interesting. Uh, I'll, I'll cut the time. You, you'll find the time put in the description, maybe. Um, but yeah, we'll both be talking about referees. Me as a referee, I'll be talking from a, a perspective. I don't know what the driving mall, uh, the driving mall. I don't know what driving mall is going to throw at us. So well, that'll be an interesting discussion on Friday. Um, be an angry fan perspective. <laughs> yeah, he's fan. I'm. I'm, <laughs> I'm a. I'm a referee, and I think uh, 
Jeremy Moore will have to be the uh, the, the uh, moderator when it comes to that. But um, yeah, and also look out for a video I'm doing with Hypersport and the Lions Legends versus the All Blacks Legends. Um, uh, that's something that I look forward to recording in the next couple of days as well. So as, as always, you catch all the uh, links to all his Twitter, social medias, all that sort of thing in the, car, in the description below. But that's it for today. Uh, thanks for joining me and thanks everyone for tuning in and watching. And we'll see you all next week as well. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.